quick background on the area, guys. Um, and it's part of the adventure, travelling to these places to do your own research, your investigative research. It's all part of the adventure. I'll give you a real quick background check on the area. So Pike here is a bit of an unusual one. It's not a, uh, it's not a Maori name or an English name. It's a combination of the two. Okay, so when the settlers first got to the area, they um, they, they, they only knew a few Maori words and Pai was one of them. Okay, now Pai means good. So they, um, they looked around the area, they liked what they saw and said, well this is Pai, this is good. So they uh, they called it Pai. But they didn't know the Maori word for here, so they used the English. So that's Pai here. Basically, that's literal translation of good here. Just across the way, you have um, you have Russell. That's a ten-minute ferry ride. Um, very historical part of New Zealand. New Zealand's first capital. It was also the largest whaling port in the southern hemisphere. Now, the distinction here is it was a port. It wasn't a station. Okay, so um, so a station is where they process whale blubber. Okay, a port was a supply.
beer down ten times the size of that one basically. But yeah, so they were all they're all cars. Incidentally Auckland has more volcanoes per square area than any other place on earth by a long way. There are 54 that they know of. Some of them so ancient and weathered you have no idea you're standing on one. The oldest they believe is Lake Kupoki over on the North Shore. As the name suggests, it's a lake. And the youngest the volcano in Auckland is Rangi Toto, that beautiful shield island volcano out in the Hauraki Harbour. That lasted up to 600 years ago and the early Maori were here to witness it and they named it Rangi Toto which means blood and red in the sky. So that's obviously indicative of a uh, volcanic eruption.
coffee. Well, I'm going to have one too, of course, but um, while we're doing that, I'm going to actually gas up in this petrol station here. So once I've gassed up, I'll reverse back a little bit and we'll hop on our merry way.
this pub on our right here, this tavern, that used to be the officer's mess slash hospital. So this is the airbase, we're in the airbase confines right now. So local girls, yeah, the, um, it was, this was the 1940s after all, was all. Solitary emu, all by itself. 
place as we drove it. So you got um, over here it's a, a browny sort of a colour. You go around the corner it turns into a ready pink. And it really does become pink. It's uh, similar to Petra in Jordan. Jordan. And then you go around a couple more corners and it's brown and it's red.
Island, fantastic fishing ground, but they're, um, they're obscured today. So to our left, we've got Australia, about 2,000 kilometers away. To our right, we have Chile, which is um, about 10,000 kilometers away, 10 or 11. And to our north, we have absolutely nothing until you get to uh, Bering Sea, the Bering Strait, where Russia meets Alaska. It's, um, it's about 13, 14,000 kilometers away. It's a very, very exposed part of New Zealand. But much closer to home, much, much closer to home, on our left we have the toilets, the public toilets. Just past the toilets is the entrance to the cave. You walk through that gateway there and turn right. Now it's all downhill one way, guys, which means it's all uphill coming back. Okay, at a, at a, at a brisk walk, you can get down to the lighthouse in 10 minutes. But remember, it's, um, it's all uphill coming back.